Hey guys, welcome to episode 23 of the D Heart House podcast. Today is Friday, December 1st. Wait, December 1st. Oh my god, it's a new month. Um, and my name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from Big Spring, Texas. And I'm knitting a hat. This is my knitting podcast, so I'm knitting a hat. Um, yeah, that's that. Knitting a hat, that's that. So, I'm a little crazy today because of my head cold. It's making me a little loopy. So, that could be fun and it could be weird. <laughs> so, if you're a new viewer, thanks for tuning in. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. <laughs> uh, please hit subscribe. Uh, to receive notifications when I post new episodes and hit thumbs up if you like this episode. And as always, feel free to put any comments below. So, yes, it has been two weeks since my last yarn confession. Uh, Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving holiday happened. Uh, we went to see family. We did not go camping. Um, we all got sick and <laughs> went back to our regularly scheduled lives. So, <laughs> anyway, I'll talk about that later in the episode after I talk about all of the knitting. So, let's start with the yardy goodness. Well, let's start with announcements. So, announcements. First, I would like to talk about the Canuck Socks Knit Along. So, I'm hosting a knit along for the Canuck Socks pattern, which is a pattern designed by me. Uh, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And the knit along is just to knit a pair of Canuck Socks out of any yarn, any size. Just just use my pattern is the only thing. And then when you're finished with the pair, post a picture in the finished, finished objects thread. And I'll have a random drawing for the winner after I close it out on December 1st, which is today. However, last episode, I mentioned extending the deadline to the end of the year. And I'm going to do that. I've decided I'm going to do that. So, you have more time. You have a whole other month. I will not close out the thread until January 1st of 2018. That's right. January 1st of 2018, I will close out the, the Canuck Socks Knit Along FO thread. All right. So, I realize that this is the time of year everyone's doing Christmas knitting. And... Um, if socks are one of your your gifts, this could, you know, help with that. Also, I should say, feel free to double dip with other knit-alongs. I mean, by all means, get your prizes. Um, yeah, so, what was I saying? Christmas stuff. So, yeah, um... This may not have been the best time of year to do this, and I really apologize for any of you who are like, I really wanted to do this, but Christmas knitting, not a big deal. I'm going to have more knit-alongs in 2018, and I'm going to try to avoid the Christmas season next time, because I understand that's really stressful for some, and I don't want to make your knitting stressful, so yeah. I should have a Christmas knit along during Christmas, like knit all the stuff uh, next year. Anyway, 
So yeah, that's that. And the prize for the knit along is going to be one of my bags from my Etsy shop, D Heart House Creations. And the winner will get to choose a design that they like, and I will send that off to them. And the winner will be chosen at random out of the posts in the finished object thread. So, yes. All right. So for announcements, is that it? One more announcement. Um, I guess it's about the shop. Let's put it in shop update. Hey guys, let's talk about shop update. Okay, so shop update. <laughs> D Hard House Creations on Etsy is my shop. I sell handmade bags and stitch markers. I think I only have bags up there right now. And um, I put two new bags up in the shop, so I'll talk about those in a second. But first, for you, my podcast viewers, I have a coupon code. This coupon code is good for 15% off in my shop until the end of the year. So this code will expire on December 31st of 2017. Okay, and the code is Podcast 15 so use us at checkout, get 15% off your order, and have a cool new bags. So the two new bags I whipped up um, are my Bake Off bags. I have a small Notion size, and I use this clear vinyl on my Notions pouches because it's so much easier to find your little goodies in there. Okay. So it's just, it's cooking themed or baking themed. It's this, it has this light teal uh, background to it with checks and stripes and, t and this really nice tan brown for a lot of the tools. There's a cheese grater <laughs> and measuring spoons and oven mitts. And it's, it's super cute. So on the Notions pouch, I put a clip so you can clip this onto your bag or into your bag. I put a little hook inside of mine um, so you can clip this in the bag and it fits inside. Um, or you can clip it on your wallet or whatever it is you want. And it's a zipper because sometimes we put little small things inside our Notions uh, bags and we don't want those to fall out and the clear so you can find your stuff really easily. And then I also have the sock size in the Bake Off design. Okay. I just think it's super cute. Zipper and tan fabric with white polka dots. And I just got too close. Covered the light. Okay back here there we go you can see the dots right okay anyway it matches the tan up here really well so yeah and uh, like I mentioned I put a little ring inside so that you can clip the notions pouch inside your bag if you like you can clip it on the zipper you can clip it on the outside you can clip it on your key ring. You can clip it on whatever. Okay. Cool. So I know that isn't much, but um, with the holidays and holidays, there was only one. With the Thanksgiving holiday, we were traveling to see family. And then um, me being sick, uh, I didn't really find much time to sew. So this was it. So I'm hoping um, to have more time in the near future. In fact, I will have more time in the near future because I'm a college math instructor and next week is final exam week. So I'll be on winter break here soon. Now, that doesn't mean the work stops for me, but it does mean I can work from home, which is nice. 
Anyway, so yeah, that's it for shop update. We've got two new bags and a coupon code. So check it out if you haven't already. And um, yes, let's talk about finished objects, shall we? Finished objects? Okay, so finished objects. Um, not the thing I'm working on, that's called a work in progress. So, I finished two things, and I'm pretty excited about both of them, because I never follow patterns, you guys. I made these patterns. What? Okay, so uh, you've seen both of these before, just not finished. So the first one, First thing I finished is a pair of socks. And, uh, yeah, okay. They're color work socks. What? Okay. Figure out where your camera is, Alicia. So, these are my, maybe I can hold them like this. I need Michael to make me wood sock blockers. These things just slide down this plastic. You know? I've got smooth yarn and smooth sock blockers and everything's just slippy slidey. Anyway, tangents. Um, so I'm calling these my Siren socks. And so I play a game called Guild Wars 2. Michael and I love playing this game and my main character is a Silvari, who's like a plant person, and so I named these after one of the Silvari in the game, named Siren, in one of the early stories. Anyway, I wanted to go with Mother Tree, but it didn't seem like a big enough tree for any of you who play that game, which is probably not many of you. <laughs> Whatever. Um, Robin from the Cherry Pearls podcast, if you're watching, first of all, I'd be amazed that you'd be watching me, of all people. But I think she plays World of Warcraft, and I'm like, hey, system, what's up? Okay, knitters who game. Yeah. It's the cold talking, I'm telling you. So, um, yeah, I knit these. Um, oh my god, I can't remember the yarn. This is a cascade yarn in this really dark navy. And I've used it before for um, toes and heels on socks, and I just, I love it. And the gray, it's either cascade or cloudboard. It's either Cascade or Cloudboard. I don't know. I think it's Cascade. These look the same. I think they're both Cascade. Anyway, uh, I'll put it on the screen. So, um, yes, yeah, so we've got a light gray and a dark navy, so there's a really good contrast. And um, I did a heel flap and gusset, as you can see. Um, because I wanted to write a full pattern, which included a heel this time. <laughs> and I can't steal the Fish Lopes Kiss heel pattern as much as I want to. It's wonderful. If you don't already have that pattern, it's a dollar. You should get it. Um, anyway, so it is, you know, um, fully written. I have a chart for the color work, and I also have it written out, like, this much in the this many stitches in the main color, then do this many stitches in contrast, and do this many, anyway. I roll all of that out, and I see the mailman walking up, so the dogs are going crazy. Yep. So my test knitters, um, I hope you're having fun, and again with the Christmas knitting, no pressure. 
not a big deal. Just let me know how it goes when you finish. And um, I'm not sure when I'm going to put the pattern up, but I do need to take pictures and do a little more editing to the format of the pattern because uh, it's not the best. I just sent you guys my first draft. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that's bad. Um, so I'm going to fluff it up a bit more and then send you guys a new copy. So yeah. anyway, I love these socks. They're super awesome. I will say I, I did wash them and sort of block them. So I don't have blocking mats and pins. I just soak them and lay them out on towels. So, I mean, that's what I did with these guys. So, um, when I laid the socks out, I was really worried because they looked humongous. They looked humongous. And I put the sock blocker up next to them, and they were way bigger than the sock blocker. So, I'm really glad that when they were drying, they um, scrunched up a bit because I was freaking out that they were going to be way, way, way too big. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of like it's loose here, which is fine. I have high arches, so that's good. And it's not as loose here as it was before. It was like way out here. No, was like, um, mm -mm, that's not going to fit me. Yeah. Okay. So, Siren socks, they were fun. Um, yeah, color work is definitely something you have to pay attention to. At least I do. And um, I did hold the yarn, uh, one in my left, one in my right. And after watching Skein Deer Knits, her latest podcast episode, I can't remember the number, but she talked about that being bad because when you hold the yarn in your left and you knit versus holding the yarn in your right and knitting you have different gauges and so it, it's not like that changes when you're doing color work so you have two different gauges and if that's the case that kind of explains a lot here right because I mean I was catching my floats right on these long I gotta carry the blue all the way around on here. I'm catching the floats in the background. But I mean, I'm just saying, like, next time I'm gonna try something different. While I love them, I still have room for improvement when it comes to color work. And I want to. I really love the way color work looks. I think that's the first thing that drew me to knitting. Honestly, it was color work, but it's it was way too intimidating for me to try it first. <laughs> now that I have been doing it a while, I feel like I'm up for the challenge. So, anyway, uh, yeah. So, Sierra and socks. I'm really excited to have those finished. And then my other finished object is a pair of mittens. So. One sec. So I finished a pair of mittens. And there's really no design to them. I wanted them to be really simple, really basic. And um, I didn't follow a pattern. I created it as I went. So um, I wanted to create a nice base on which to build more complicated patterns <laughs> or you know things with cables or color work but I wanted to get like the size and excuse me what it takes to make a thumb and things like that so I love them so last time I showed you guys half a mitten and it was too big it was way too big and you know I was knitting these with Michael in mind so I went with a dark color and really simple um, design and um, I had him try it on before I got too far I had separated 
for the thumb and knit up maybe an inch. And I just want to make sure that like everything was hitting him where it should. And yeah, it was, I gotta take one of these off. It was really baggy on the side. Like it came out to like a whole inch way too far off to the side. And so I was like, yeah, no, that seam is too baggy. And he agreed. He, no. So I ripped it out. I think I took out like, what, eight stitches? Yeah. No. It ended up being 12 because I had miscounted. <laughs> I ended up taking out 12 stitches. And it's perfect. It's, it's a little loose, which is what I wanted. I didn't want it to be, I didn't want the fabric to be stretched. And, um, you know, I wanted the cuff to come down so you could tuck it into your jacket. Or you can, you know, roll it up if that's not your thing. Um, and that's cool. So, yeah, it's just one by one ribbing. No twisted rib or anything, just really plain. Um, and then stockinette stitch and, you know, gusset for the thumb and just really cool. I love it. So I made these out of the yarn is Knit Picks Palette. So it's a toothier, grabbier, woolier yarn than Merino, which I think is great, especially for mittens. Um, I don't really want them to be slippery. I want to be able to help with gripping things. So I like them. Um, so I have the tag here. Yeah, Knit Picks Palette in the Stellar Heather colorway. And Knit Picks Palette is, what is it, 100%? Yes, Peruvian Highland wool. So there's no nylon in here. We'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, so it comes in, what, a 50 gram ball? Yeah, a 50 gram ball. And I love this because here's what's left over. Oh my God, guys. It looks like a donut. It looks like a donut, especially since this color is like black with red in it, so it looks kind of brown. Oh my God. It looks like a donut. <laughs> I think that's the coolest. Anyway, um, I need to weigh this because I don't know how much is left. But yeah, I didn't even use 50 grams. I don't know how much is left. Anyway, my scale is way over there. I'm too lazy to go get it. Uh, but yeah, they fit me and they fit Michael. So we can basically share them. Until I knit another pair. <laughs> whatever. Uh, yeah, so today it was a high of, was, we're, we're still getting there, high of 70 degrees. It's December 1st. Uh, but it starts out chilly. Like when I left, it said my Alexa told me it was 38 degrees outside um, when I left and the sun was coming up. So I know when Michael left, it was a little colder than that. But anyway, um, I love them. So I wrote up the pattern for this and I'm going to post that as well um, as just a really, really easy pattern. Um, very simple, just, you know, kind of a jumping off point for um, adding in designs because once you know the stitches, the stitch count and everything, it's not that hard to put a color work pattern on here. I don't think. <laughs> so I'm excited to play around with that. And maybe play around with where the thumb is located as well. Because I put it on the side. Because uh, that's what I'm used to. I'm used to mittens with a thumb on the side. And, um, you know, I'm from Michigan. And this is my map. So I need my thumb on the side. Okay? <laughs> Any of you are from Michigan? Maybe you get it right. Uh, yeah, so. I miss using my hand as a map, I have to say. I'm from here. Point to hand. Okay, so, um, so the Siren Socks pattern is not going to go up for a bit. 
um because i'm going to wait for some feedback from my test knitters just you know i'm not looking for anything super in depth just yes the numbers make sense and um or or if they don't more importantly when things don't work out um if my stitch counts are off then i i would love to know that um yeah so i knit the second sock and i kind of purposely waited a bit to knit it so that i would kind of forget what i had just done and then that way i'd be forced to follow the pattern i wrote so when knitting the second sock i followed along with my pattern and it worked out fine for me but then I, as much as I say I forgot how I did the first one, I, I, I had those memories. So anyway, it's just, it's just good to get fresh eyes, proofreading. Um, it's, it's good form. So there's that. And then my my really simple mittens. And I'm not sure what, what I'm going to call the pattern. Uh, maybe I'll just call them really simple mittens. There we go. Simple mitts. No, they're not mitts, they're mittens, because they have ends on them, right? Those would be mitts, mittens. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'll be posting the pattern for these for free, because it was just no-brainer. Okay, that was fun, and I love giving you guys free patterns. Yay! So, um, that's going to move us into, uh works in progress. So for works in progress, I have um, well, a couple of things you haven't seen before. So first I will talk about my half finished object. So I cast on some socks. I guess just one. I'm knitting them one at a time. I cast on a sock for Mary, my mother-in-law, and I finished the first sock. Ooh, I'm so sorry. I finished the first sock. So this is uh, peppered with dog hair. Um, this is knit out of uh, Patton's Croy. Let me just adjust the light here a sec. So this is knit out of Patton's Croy in the green striped rag colorway. So it's gray, green, and blue. And there's two different shades of gray. There's a dark gray and a, and a light gray. And I didn't do any contrasting heels and toes and that kind of thing. I didn't really have the contrasting color that would go with this, so why even do it? Um, and so for her, I do the uh, three by one rib and fish lips kiss heel, standard toe, and you know, just keep the rib going down the foot. And I had her try them on just to make sure. And I think they're gonna work out very well. So yeah, I finished the first one. I still have the second one needs to be cast on. So, but I finished these yesterday, which was nice. Excuse me. So, my other works in progress, um, everything's on the needles to show you. So, let me just move these blockers. So, the first one I'll show you, um, I'm knitting on currently this is going to be a hat and I've just started the ribbing so what's funny is I posted a picture of this this morning on Instagram and I was further than this and I tried it on and it was too big let's up with this uh, anyway it was it was too big I think I got like an inch and a half in the ribbing and uh, tried it on 
and I don't think it even stretched out the ribbing to go on my head and I was like yeah that's too big so I ripped it out and started over with less stitches so um yeah I started with 120 and now I'm using 108 stitches so I need it to be a multiple of six for the pattern that I want to do so so I basically took out two repeats and I think that's gonna work better once I get a bit further I'll try it on again yeah uh, so the yarn is in my yarn it and yeah it's a tweed which is fun and it's like this mustard color so the yarn is knit picks city tweed DK and the color is lemon curd and this is a what's it say here 55% merino, 25% alpaca, 20% Donegal tweed. So 55, 55 merino wool, 25 alpaca, and 20 uh, Donegal tweed. That's good. And uh, yeah, so it's a DK weight yarn. I'm using um, US size four needles for the ribbing and then I'll switch to a size six for the body and yeah I'm uh, I'm really excited I have some pom-poms um, ordered and those those fluffy fake fur ones and I'm really excited um, to pair those with these Tweety hats so these Tweety hats like I finished them already whatever I showed you guys a bunch of this yarn I think last time and I said I wanted to make hats so I started one and I'm really excited about it so yeah it's really soft I love it okay stop whispering to the camera so my other work in progress is living in my Woolridge designs bag <laughs> Yep, just had to double check. Uh, Woolridge Designs has a shop on Etsy. I won this bag in a knit along earlier this year. And so, yeah. This is my Meandering Malabrigo Shawl, which is the Meandering Shawl by Stephen West. This is not a free pattern, this is a paid for pattern available on Ravelry and I need to blow my nose <sighs> okay much better so yes meandering shawl by Stephen West very well written pattern easy to follow it is a brioche shawl and I'm new to brioche and like I said it was it is very easy to follow. So if you're neat, new to brioche, you're looking for a pattern, this is wonderful. So I am, I'll show you the shawl, it's getting very big and I'm afraid, I'm so afraid of the stitches falling off the needles because it's brioche and I have no idea how to fix brioche. So if I mess up it's staying. So my stitch marker here with the campfire is where I was and I picked this up so I'm guessing that's where it was last time I showed this to you <laughs> um, yeah so brioche is uh, reversible knitting it's a style of knitting that creates a fabric that's very smooshy and stretchy and uh, reversible so on this side the color that's dominant is Malabrigo and here it is in the ball it's glorious yeah the main color in this is purple but then it has a bunch of other colors in it and it's just oh my god oh my god yeah it's really pretty um and what's this called anniversario yeah it's really cool and then on the other side the other color is dominant 
And so it looks like a solid gray on this side, but it's not. It has speckles in it. So there's pink and blue and yellow speckles in the gray. And I'll show you the yarn in the ball. So you can kind of see the speckles in there. So this is uh, dye is cast yarn and the color is rainbow storm. So yeah, this is so pretty and I love working on it. I've gotten the rhythm of it, which is really nice. However, <laughs> there are so many stitches on this needle. There are so I mean, you can see it bunched up at the ends here. I'm so afraid of it falling off the ends. But, uh, yeah, so I love it. And when I block this out, I just know it's going to be really, you know, it's going to stretch a lot. So I love it. So I think I added, what, a few inches? couple inches to this. I didn't get super far. Um, but hey, just a few inches here and a few inches there. And before you know it, I'll have a shawl. And it'll be a Brio shawl and it'll be a Stephen West shawl. And I'm super excited. So, all right, let's just make sure these stitches are way up on the needle. Okay. Yeah, so, um, I did also add some squares to my scrappy blanket over here, but I'm not going to hold it up for you to see. I added four squares. Not a big deal. Um, but I will tell you about this blanket. This is my worsted weight scrap blanket. I'm knitting it out of worsted weight acrylic yarn, mostly Red Heart. I love this yarn. Bernat. Those types of things. Um, basically your Walmart finds. And um, you can see my rack of acrylic yarn here. My wonderful rainbow of colors. And I'm just putting them into this blanket. So, um, yeah, I'm not yet halfway. But it's, I'm not actively working on it, so how can I expect to get there if I don't really work on it? Anyway, um, yeah, I just one day really wanted to put some squares on it, so I did. I put four squares on in a day. Uh, and it was very enjoyable. Yes, so that's that. Um, what else do I have to talk about with you guys? Well, how about um, life adventures? So um, this is now moving into the non-knitting portion of the podcast where you get to hear about my life a little bit. And I will say, actually, oh, I should have put this in announcements, but I'll say it now. Um, I'm going to attempt to do Vlogmas. And I guess it kind of works here, too, because Vlogmas is not necessarily, you know, all knitting stuff. It's going to be about my day-to-day -day life. So, um, yeah, I started recording today some things, and I'll have to piece that together for you guys. Um, but Ellie of Skein Deer Knits, I'm with you, girl. Um, I'm going to give this a shot, and if it only lasts a week, that's okay. Um, and Vlogmas isn't going to replace my regular episodes, it'll just be extra. So, um, I'm going to give it a shot, see how it goes, and it might not end up being every day like it's intended to be, but, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of a commitment, but I want to, I want to give it a shot because I really enjoy watching other vlogs that other knitting podcasters do. So I want to, I want to try it.
Anyway, life, life outside of knitting, my knitting, non-knitting adventures, life adventures. Oh my gosh. Life adventures. So, yeah, we had, so it's been two weeks. So, let's go in order, shall we? So, Thanksgiving um, holiday, we went to San Antonio to visit Michael's brother's family. And we had Thanksgiving dinner, and it was fun. Uh, we stayed in a hotel, and it was great, except that there was no coffee at the breakfast, continental breakfast. I went down three times to get breakfast, and it's supposed to start at six. And by the time seven rolled around, I was like, which better have my coffee because <laughs> I have to start the day with, with a cup of coffee. Otherwise, I get really bad headaches. And I know I'm addicted to it. I know it. I'll admit it. I'm addicted to coffee. And I've realized this about myself. Which is why now when we go on vacation, I pack backup coffee. <laughs> oh my god. I now pack back up coffee because we had a bad experience where Alicia didn't have her coffee and was super cranky. So, um, yeah, I have to do that now. So I was like, oh, thank God I packed my backup coffee. Well, we didn't end up having to use it. I talked to the, the gentleman running the front desk and I was like... I was basically like a tragedy walking down there just like where's the coffee and he was like I'm so sorry the machine isn't working um, and they put up a sign that said basically that and offered no alternative and so I went to him like what am I gonna do and um, you know they give you some coffee packets in your room with a mini coffee maker it makes one cup at a time so I was like can we get more of those coffee bags um, because of the one regular that we get that give you one regular one decaf it's not gonna cut it and um, yeah he was like actually that's a really good idea I'm gonna get a whole box and I'm gonna put it out on the table here so when people come down for coffee <laughs> They can just take these back up to their room and make coffee. Yeah. So, yeah. I. Funny thing is, I only brought two back up to the room. And Michael was like, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you grab an armful? Yeah. So he went down and got an armful for me. And him. It's not like I'm the only one, right? Anyway. Yeah. So no coffee at the hotel. Are you kidding me? Whatever. Um... Yeah, so we had fun with family. We did lots of Black Friday shopping online. We didn't go to any places. Michael was sick the whole Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and then at the end of the vacation is when I picked up the sickness to come back to work. Um, but yeah, we did a bit of shopping on Amazon and picked up um, more um, things to put around the house. So I now have an Alexa in my craft room and and I have a new tablet which I'm pretty excited about. Um, and uh, we got a new um, topper for our mattress. So we have a gel memory foam thing on our bed but it's the wrong size so we have a queen size bed and I think he has um, it's a full size topper on a queen size bed and so there's a few inches on all around where there's no topper and it slides around and it's just whatever so we had already decided at some point we're gonna buy a queen size one just whenever we get around to it. And then I was scrolling through Amazon during the weekend. 
and uh, I was like, oh my god, it's 50% off. <laughs> yeah, I bought it right away. <laughs> I'm really glad I did. So we're going to get to try that out now tonight. Because um, when you take it out of the packaging, it's it's really compressed. And you have to let it sit out for a couple days to poof back out, I guess. Um, so we got it, but then we couldn't use it right away because you have to let it poof out. So uh, it's poofed out. <laughs> And I'm really excited to sleep on that tonight because I need a good night's sleep. Uh, and so does Michael because his head cold is insane. Anyway, um, yeah. So besides that, um, so I'm getting back into running and I'm wanting to be more healthy. I want to lose weight. Um, but mostly I want to be healthy. I want to be an individual who doesn't struggle walking up the stairs and who can lift things without being sore the next day uh, and who isn't worried about um, heart disease and things like that. So, um, so I got this book called, excuse me, called No Meat Athlete and I'm trying it out. And, um, yeah, the author of the book, can't remember his name, I'm so sorry, maybe I'll have a picture of him, uh, he suggests making small changes, and if you just go, just change everything, um, those aren't really things that last a long time. So what you want to do is, is make changes to your, your lifestyle slowly. And he talks about habits, and oh my god, he got me there. Because I was like, I do have habits, when you sit down and think about it. And he mentions, like, coming home and going straight for the fridge. And I was like, he knows me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I come home, I let the dog out, because she's like, please let me out. And then I go for the fridge. And he's right. I, I totally have that habit and I do it too when I'm um, when I'm bored I'll go to the fridge I'm not even hungry I go to the fridge so um, so I'm trying to break those habits well maybe not break them change them so I'm trying to change it into um, when I come home for lunch I have a salad it's not you know go to Taco Bell or <laughs> Uh, whatever. It's come home, make a salad. And, um, I've been doing really well with that. Now, today we went for Chinese for lunch, so I'm going to have a salad for dinner. So, my goal is specifically to have a salad every day. And I would like to have that salad for lunch every day. But sometimes with, sometimes I can't always fit that in at lunch, so then I got to have it at dinner. So, I'm trying to be flexible with my goals as well. But anyway, since I've set that goal, I've had a salad every day. I'm really happy about that. Um, it's only been like a week, but still, full week. I'm going to have my salad for dinner tonight before I go to band practice, which I'll talk about in a, in a bit. But anyway, um, and then I'm also having these smoothies for breakfast and I haven't really set a goal with it because I kind of already set up this habit a bit over the summer I was having smoothies for breakfast but I was getting hungry soon after having the smoothie and it was supposed to be a meal replacement not a meal supplement so um in in this book no me athlete he has um recipes to go with the plan, which is great. Um, so I should say this is this is about eating a plant-based diet for someone who's active, who's an athlete. And I plan to be running regularly like an athlete. Training for races um, is what I want. And so, yeah, anyway. Um, so it's about eating plant-based um, uh, foods. So he's got these recipes in the book. And so I was trying out the smoothie. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. That thing keeps me full for three hours. What? Okay. This is insane. Okay, so I went and bought a different kind of protein powder. One that's a vegan protein powder. And instead of the um, muscle milk stuff. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure that, what effect that is having on this. I think it's probably more like the things you add in, the extra things, other than the fruit. Because before I was doing fruit, protein powder, and almond milk. Maybe some ice, depending on if the fruit was frozen or not. Um, now, I'm doing fruit, protein powder, almond milk, flaxseed, coconut oil. Yeah. Amazing. Now, okay, several years ago, probably like five years ago, um, before Michael and I got together, yeah, five years ago, I used to have this, like six years ago, I was in Michigan, I'm still in Michigan, um, I was eating this breakfast cereal mix, um, with grape nuts and oatmeal and flaxseed and bananas and blueberries and that thing and almond milk and that kept me full, like I said, for the three hours, um, but I'm not huge into cereal, and even at the time, it was a struggle to get through it, because I just, I just don't like cereal. I don't know why. Um, anyway, so yeah, that flaxseed, man, I don't know. Anyway, it's amazing. It's good. When I could taste, I tasted it, and it tasted great, and it keeps me full, so I'm really happy about this. Um, so I'm having smoothies for breakfast, salads for lunch, and I was trying out some recipes from the book. I made this, um, lentil soup, and it's called Sentimental Lentil Soup in the book. And it was really good. I've never had lentil soup before. It was tasty. Um, so, and it was nice to have some soup on hand when I got sick. <laughs> but, anyway, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. I feel good despite my cold. Um, honestly, because I'm just like dabbling in it, sprinkling it into my diet, it's not like I'm noticing a huge change. Um, and I think that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this slow transition, not this overnight, oh my god, I feel so different. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm super happy about all of that. So, my throat really hurts right now. So, I'm going to call this the end of the podcast. I'm going to drink some more tea, have my salad for dinner, and go to band practice. Because... I'm going to help out with the Christmas performance at one of the churches here in town. So I'm going to be playing percussion in the band in this huge performance. And I'm really excited about it. I'm not sure what to expect except big. Um, really big. Really lights and bands and the drama people are helping out and, and massive. So yeah, so I have practice tonight and practice all day tomorrow and we'll see and performance tomorrow and performance on Sunday. So I got to get out my music and start, um, looking over, over that while I eat my dinner and, and go to practice. So I don't know when I'll get this posted, but thanks for sticking around. Thanks for tuning in, and um, I will see you guys next time. Happy knitting. <laughs>